This is episode 19 of the Audacity to Lead podcast. Looking to make the leap from potential to productive performance? Thinking of starting up with business, career, ministry, or your life tax? Join Dario Samuel on the Audacity to Lead podcast as he shares tips, steps, and strategies to help you chart a compelling course for your life. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Audacity to Lead podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you get focused, get started, and be impactful. My name is Dyer Samuel, and on this episode, I had a conversation with Ben Kuberson on how to succeed as a young entrepreneur without burning out. I know this is the beginning of the year. This is January of 2015, and you are probably as energized as I am right now and you have a lot of plan you have a lot of stuff you want to get done this year and you definitely will be super passionate at this moment and you will want to run all of your energies in this episode we are going to discover how to avoid running out of energy how to avoid suffering burnout just as Ben did a little way about to Ben before we get into the conversation Ben achieved all of the financial goals he set for himself at the age of 27 and then he had a burnout which gave him an experience. Ben believes the missionaries of the future will be entrepreneurs who have life missions, who have goals, who have purpose for their lives. Ben is the CEO of a lot of companies in the areas of home building, land development, construction, retail, speaking and training arenas. Most of these companies started after he left his granddad's commune at the age of 21. Ben is the best-selling author of Succeed Without Burnout and 5 F words that will energize your life. Ben's goal is to help people know, grow and go. He loves to teach and inspire and motivate young people to become entrepreneurs. Ben is a dynamic motivator whose honest down-to-earth style engages people wherever he speaks. As he shares his message today on this episode, you are going to find hope and encouragement and are going to discover powerful words like the mission entrepreneur and words <laughs> that are actually going to inspire you and you are really going to enjoy this episode. So let's get into the conversation with Ben Kubasek at kubasek.com. How are you? How is today? Oh, it's been okay. It's be, I've been working in the office. I've had some meetings. I've um, uh, I've been doing some writing, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a nice uh, a nice sunny day here in Romania. Yeah, definitely. It's How are also, things in Nigeria? Things are very fine here, and it's quite sunny here too in Nigeria. After the cold Hamathan season we've just had, well, it's, yeah, it's... I was in I was in Israel um, last week with my wife to a wedding, and it was really cold and wet there. I thought, oh man, I don't want to visit Israel in the winter time anymore. <laughs> the time before I was in September, and before that was in April. It, those are nice times. But... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I've never been a missionary, but people have always. Uh, referred to me as one, but I've always <laughs> been an entrepreneur, wow, and I very much resist uh, being called a missionary because uh, what I have done, I started, I was born and raised in a religious commune that my grandfather had started. He was um, born in Hungary, and as a young guy, he, at the age of 17, he realized that uh, fighting his fellow man was not uh, right, and so he defected from the army, and then uh, he started publishing some propaganda against um, the communists and so on and so forth. He uh, uh, fled for his life, ended up in Canada, and uh, started a commune, which I was uh, born into. But I realized at an early age that I was not a uh, born a communist uh, I was born a capitalist and uh, that was inside me I had to go and do my own thing so I left this commune when I was 21 years old okay. and I had okay yeah yeah I had no education other than the eighth grade education I got in the commune I didn't have any money I didn't have uh, contacts but I had this uh, tremendous desire to succeed 
And so I just uh, went right into business. So I say I've never had a job uh, in my life. I'm 56 years old now. Wow. And I I didn't didn't have a you know uh, uh, education other than the eighth grade. And the only time I could get to university was when they asked me to uh, speak to the. Uh, graduating class and so you <laughs> if you have this desire to succeed there isn't yeah. much you can't do the thing is uh, what caught me by surprise was at the age of 27 and I had achieved all my the financial goals I had set for my life I, I crashed uh, physically mentally spiritually wow. and I went through a burnout which almost cost my life in that uh, you know, I experienced depression and anxiety and worry and things that I had never encountered before. And I said to my doctor, you know, if this is life, I don't want to live it. And he said, well, hey, just hang on. Uh, you're burned out. That just means you were on fire. People who aren't on fire don't burn out. Yeah. And you're just going to have to go away and do something different for a while and uh, stay away from your business until you can't stay away anymore. And so... Uh, I did. I took my family. We went to Florida. And it wasn't long. I mean, 15 days we were headed back. I, I wasn't healed. It took me six months then to completely heal. Wow. But I've never gone back down that path because I realized that the advice I was getting, especially – from pastors and these religious people who tried to counsel me because, you know, they saw me, I should be this <laughs> strong guy. They, yeah. they said, oh, you were just doing too many things. But the fact is that was a myth. That was a lie. There was too many things I was not doing. Hmm. And that's why I burned out. I wasn't spending time in prayer, in reading the Bible and things that I do to start every day now. I wasn't spending time helping others and that's why i got involved in mission work and people started to call me a missionary but i've never <laughs> been a missionary i've never been supported by anybody for any projects i only i believe that uh, the um, apostle paul he was the first missionary and he yeah, was definitely. a real missionary he not only supported himself he supported others and so yeah. actually my my message to missionaries in romania is to go home because they no longer serve a purpose here or in many countries because we already have our own mission school that I helped start a number wow. of years ago. And so we send our own missionaries away for a, a tenth of the cost that we can employ a North American missionary. Um, we we need to be a good example. Missionaries are yep. a very bad example to natives because they rely on the West to supply their need. Yeah, And that's not... The, the scripture says, hey, we, we've got all this ability and potential and power in us, uh, greater things we can do than what Jesus even did. So, like, yeah. why are we sitting here as victims? And so we, we promote, you know, we think we're helping, but our helping hurts. And so the missionaries of the future will be entrepreneurs. And that's why my passion and my mission now is to help young people become entrepreneurs, to help them know, to teach because that's another thing that I love to do is to yeah. teach. And then to get them to go, uh, they have to start something. They have to get off their butt and go and do something, and uh, then they will grow. As they are going, I'll, uh, you know, I will motivate them or I will inspire them to go as long as they promise that mm -hmm. they will continue to grow. And then I'll inspire them through mentoring or whatever way I can, you know, I'll write books and um, I'll do a podcast. If you help me set one up here, I'll do it anyway, but yeah, it would be nice. I will. But uh, it's only the, so I left that farm. I became a home builder. I built a lot of homes in North America and Canada. I built about 650 houses and developed a lot of real estate. Wow. And then I decided, well, I should um, help these missionaries and uh, organizations uh, build buildings because that's my expertise. And I thought that's why I was created. I thought that was my purpose. But then I realized um, – uh, I really need to share my message. I was created to give myself away, not just my skills uh, in the building business. And so yeah. I got into um, 
uh, humanitarian work and helping people. And then I got sidetracked again. I got so busy building <laughs> projects that I yeah. forgot about building people. And it's just now the last uh, year or so that I've refocused and I've, it's actually really, this is the year which I will put my speaking and uh, writing back into high gear. And the uh, uh, thing is, I, I don't, or should I say, I don't want to die with my message in me. Yeah. See, I want to leave that behind, and I don't know how long I will live. Already you have 56 years, right? I'm 56, but I've already lived 156, so I don't... <laughs> the thing is, you know, I I said to my doctor when I burned out at 27, he said, why, why you want to kill yourself? You're only 27. I says, I've already lived three lifetimes. Look at what I've done. He said, I know, he says, but if you can get it, if you can get through this, he says you'll be better than you ever were. I wow. said, how is that possible? <laughs> he says, oh, wow. you'll be able to help all the other people who are going through it. And they, uh, you know, they want advice from somebody who's been there. Yeah. And so I call burnout my best, worst experience. It, wow. It, it was worse than that. It almost took my life. It was, I say, I went to hell and back so many times I could take tours. <laughs> and it, it, it was just, it was just one of those, you know, I never experienced depression before. Yeah. I never experienced anxiety attacks. And most people say, oh, you're a man of faith. You should just pray. You should be, oh, nuts to you. See, now when I give advice to people, hmm. um, it's very unconventional. <laughs> That's wow. why uh, my message is, uh, I say nobody has accused me of being normal in at least 20 years. Wow. Because I've exposed myself to so much pain and poverty in this world that wow. Lua, you can't unsee it. Yeah. When, once you've seen this stuff, you can't unsee it. That's the thing. And then yeah. you've got to do something about it. And so that's why I think, I, I believe, and I know that the future is bright in terms of this world that we're living in because yeah. we have so many uh, entrepreneurs in this world who are doing good and would like to do more good. Yeah. And yeah. I think it, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I mean, doom and gloom is just, I I have no reality. I know uh, the world economic uh, situation and the, all, it's not that I have my head in the sand, but I believe that uh, if uh, just... Focus on the young people. They're our future. Let's help them get yeah. into their own businesses and show yeah. them how they can impact their communities just yeah. by having a business. See, I'm living in a very poor part of Romania, which wow. doesn't make absolutely any sense at all. I, I moved from the country of Canada to Romania. People say, like, why in the world would you do that? <laughs> you like Romania? I said, yeah. nobody to Romania because they like it. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't – it's not that I like Romania – it's that I love Romanians. I see uh, such um, oh, injustice here and so much uh, pain and poverty that is totally unnecessary. This is a land, a country with abundant uh, agricultural potential and wow. everything else you can imagine. But it's... You know, when the communist uh, uh, Ceausescu ran this place, he yep. just he destroyed a lot of things. But the thing he destroyed was the ability of people to think. And that's why people like you and I promoting a message of transformation through the renewing of your mind by giving these people some positive truth. See, yeah. truth will set you free. Definitely. But it will make you awfully uncomfortable in yeah. the meantime. Yeah. In time, yeah. you know, and and not everybody likes to hear the truth. When I yeah. speak up, you know, sometimes it's the last time I'm invited to speak in a church because some of the things that I say hmm. are not really, they don't really <laughs> fit the system, the religious system that just, well, what do we do with all these people if we don't have them as missionaries in our country here? Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? We had, this is the 21st century and, yeah. uh, Missionaries we, have, we have to step up to the times. Yeah, yeah. Looking at your story, a few years ago, I was trying to get into the ministry 
thinking it was just ministry I can actually express my calling. Mm-hmm. But one day, I think 2nd of January last year, 2014, I came across a statement in a book I was reading. Peter Drucker made a statement today, and I tried to do a research. And then that was how I discovered mm-hmm. that a church is not only supposed to be a church, it's supposed to be a knowledge-based organization because God has given them insights knowledge and revelations that can actually transform people (laughs) yeah and then that was how i discovered that a church is not only supposed to be an organization that just teaches faith it should be an organization that also transform people's lives and that was when i discovered that okay so we can actually bring in another side of the church which is also the business side of the church and that was when i finally made up my mind that i'm going to be an entrepreneurial missionary just as you always say Mm -hmm. i yeah i call myself a mission entrepreneur yeah we've heard of social entrepreneur we've heard of entrepreneur and uh, people say like why you call yourself a mission entrepreneur what's the difference between a social entrepreneur because you used to call yourself a social entrepreneur Mm -hmm. i was a social entrepreneur for about 10 years before i heard the term wow and then i realized well there is one step further um up the ladder, and that's called mission entrepreneur. That's when yeah. you you go from three bottom. So, as a social entrepreneur, you have three bottom lines: profit, people, and the planet. Wow! So every project you take on has to. You've got to be contributing in all three of those areas. You've got to see a bottom line. Okay. Uh, typical entrepreneurs is interested in profit. Yeah, definitely. And then, okay, then what's a mission uh, entrepreneur? How does he fit into this? Why is he different than a social entrepreneur? Well, essentially, it's a social entrepreneur on a mission with a higher purpose. Wow. And there is one step higher, and it's my goal to achieve in life. And I've never heard the term, but I'm going to say I made it up. And that's called a legacy entrepreneur. And that's what I've started to do now is to focus on giving away all the experience that I can possibly give away because it's something I can give away and still have to take to the next place. Yeah. So I've been working on starting something called YES, Young Entrepreneur System. And we call it YES, yep. Young Entrepreneur System of Romania. And I got realizing just in this last month that is very short-sighted. Because why not have young entrepreneurs system of Nigeria, for instance? Wow. If I if I do this thing right and I do it all online, so it's all online training, you there's no reason Deo in Nigeria couldn't be uh, supporting and promoting and yeah. uh, be my affiliate in Nigeria and doing it, and it'll just take what I'm doing what I plan to do anyway mm-hmm. and make it something that was available worldwide because I, what my goal is to is to take people especially in rural areas in very poor countries and uh, show them how they could get into a business on their own uh, not by themselves but a business yeah. of their own because we would be here to support them and get them through the process yeah. but to, for within 24 hours for them to be in business on their own with very little or no experience same as I had so I'm going to I'm modeling it after my own experience of leaving this commune because we were sheltered. We didn't have a radio, a TV, and nothing. Wow. We were dressed in black clothes. We were had, wow. men had to have beards. And if you research community farm of the brethren, you'll see I was, you know, I was, you know, I was born in the, I would say I was raised in the hen house. Wow. <laughs> and then I made it to um, who's who in Canadian business in uh, six years. And that, don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you that every young person in Nigeria has the same, or in Romania has the same potential as I did. Mm-hmm. I left without money, without education, with, and I, you know, that really, the cause of my burnout could have been prevented by some experience because everything I was going through, I had to learn on my own. I had no mentor. I had no money. I, wow. And uh, so that's what makes me passionate about uh, what I do and uh, my purpose here. And uh, it's it's time now to uh, say enough uh, relief from the West, Nigeria, Romania, and all these developing countries. We don't need money because that just keeps us thinking and feeling like victims. 
Yeah. And we were born to be victors. Yeah. But as long as the West keeps sending us money, mm-hmm. we just, you know, that just destroys our self-esteem. We think, oh, yeah. gee, I wonder when the next load's coming. Yeah, yeah. And so we've we've got to stop that. Sometimes our, most times our helping hurts because we don't go about it in the right way. Wow. Somebody said, well, you feed a man for a day. Or you give a man a fish, you feed him for yeah, a day. Feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Yeah. yeah, but that that's not the end. You see, we we gotta go beyond teaching these people how to fish. We've gotta help them get in the fishing business mm-hmm. so that they can turn around and help others. Yeah. You see, the guy who knows how to fish can fish enough to feed himself as a rule. Wow. But we've got to help these people get in the fishing business. And so that's that's where I see we are right now in terms of my worldview is that, mm-hmm. uh, the you know, poverty, systemic, there's some things that make me mad, mm-hmm. some things that make me sad, and then there's some things that make me glad. glad yeah. So if you can remember those three, yeah. and you can put – a word after each one of those, you can figure out what your purpose and uh, your passion is in this world. And uh, th- the things that make me sad is uh, when I see poverty and I see the pain uh, that people are uh, enduring going through, you know, just because of poverty. It's incredible. Uh, and then I see something that makes me mad, and that is this uh, social injustice, how the uh, many times the poverty is caused by injustice and, and how we don't treat people, people right. Yeah. right. We don't treat yeah. them equally. We don't treat them as humans. And so that, you know, Mother Teresa was a credible example of someone giving their life away and just giving themselves away. Hey, yeah. you know, let's see if we can run out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like let's yeah. see if we can give so much that we just yeah. die or we starve or whatever. And there she's an example. And she never focused on changing the world. She just said yeah. if you can't change feed a hundred, feed one. So she just did what she could with what she had. And so that's you know, those that's what makes me mad is the social injustice. But there's a thing that makes me glad and that's to be able to help people help themselves and to motivate and inspire young people to get uh, out on their own to um, you know forget about looking for a job they're just the jobs that are available in this country are very yeah. scarce very scarce so you have unemployment yeah. But the other problem we have is underemployment. Mm-hmm. You know, the average wage here is $2 an hour. Mm-hmm. We're paying $2 just for one liter of gasoline. Wow. Now put that into perspective. That means we're working for minimum wage one hour for one liter of gasoline. That means if we went back to Canada, we would be paying 12 dollars for one liter of gasoline Mm -hmm. because we'd have to that's minimum wage is twelve dollars an hour now in canada so one sixth of what's here but there are so many opportunities that can be exploited by young people especially when it comes to doing online business that it doesn't matter where you are located in the world yeah so that's why i had to relocate to a very poor country to because you can tell people how it's done they say ah fine you say that you you live in canada (laughs) No, I don't. I live in Romania. Yeah. So that's why I say I'm not normal. Nobody in their <laughs> right mind would make the choices and decisions I do. Yeah. Except I know that I know that I know without a doubt that it's what I'm supposed to do and it's where I'm supposed to be. And that's the thing, you know, the sooner you can figure that out in life, the better. Yeah. So, Ben, let's talk about your book, How to Succeed Without Burnout, Proven Strategies to Move Your Life from Burnout to Balance. Mm-hmm. So what motivates I believe your story motivated the book, right? Oh, yes. After I went through that experience, I realized that this was, as I said, my best worst experience. And I need to yeah. share this experience with the rest of the world because the advice that I got when I was going through a burnout was just totally wrong. Mm. I mean, I was told I was overcommitted. <laughs> Well, that was such a lie. I mean, it's just hilarious now. There are still people that believe it. I was overcommitted. 
the fact was I was totally uncommitted to the most important things in life, to my faith, to my family, yeah. to my friends, and to my fitness, my health. The, the, so that was one lie. It, it's so funny now when I think about it, that overcommitment. Uh, yeah, sure, I was, uh, I was overcommitted in one area of my life. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I, I realized that life balance is not about doing less. Yeah. Life balance is about doing more. Mm. Burnout is never caused by doing too many things, but it is caused by someone that is not doing. There's too many things they are not doing. So let me ex- give you an example. Okay. Uh, when there one thing I wasn't doing that led to my burnout is I was not taking care of my body. I wasn't exercising the way I sh- at all. I mean, I just went from being active in the in the field, working as an electrician, to being a CEO of a company with you know <laughs> dozens and dozens of employees. In fact, I had up to ten companies at one time. Wow! And so I didn't realize that sitting still was just day by day was just destroying my ability to deal with stress for instance so once you you you, you don't have exercise you you you're just not able to handle the stress and i i didn't realize as well that exercise is uh, for instance uh, bouncing up and down motion like jogging <laughs> or something like that activates yeah. the pituitary gland in the back of my head which was making me feel good i wondered why i was on a high all the time mm. well but when i became inactive you know it just happened over it, it's you just die a slow death mm-hmm. yeah and, and a lot of people die long before they're put in a box mm. And that was the reason I wanted to write that book was to uh, – so people could live uh, while they're here on earth and they could be active and productive and still avoid burning out. So in other words, stay on fire without burning out. That's That was my – the the it really the essence of that first book uh, succeed without burnout it, it starts with the, the you know the horrific experience uh, you know it just hit me like a ton of bricks and then uh, the healing process discovering and then you know my doctor saying oh you know you've done this once you have a 50% chance of burning out again and if you burn out twice you'll have a 75% chance of I said, oh, I'm just going to kill myself because <laughs> there's no way I'm sitting around. Yeah. And you, you'd be surprised how many people contact me and say, hey, you know, I just feel like ending it all. And I say, hey, just give me 30 days. Just just start physically exercising and send me an e-short email every day after you've done that. And uh, just tell me in 30 days if you still feel like killing yourself. Most people don't because <laughs> they, they, they realize, gee, that was pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so, you know, then the, there was doctors started to use my book for burnout patients because they didn't, they didn't really have, they knew their advice really was, well, it's not their fault, but the medical profession is really not equipped to deal with this kind of an injury. And it's an injury. It's no different than breaking your arm or breaking your leg. It's just people don't like to talk about depression and anxiety and those kinds of things. We think, oh, yeah. oh you know, that they might think we're a little cracked in the head. It's just an injury like anything else. And it'll heal if you yeah. if you give it time, if you give it the environment to heal in. You know, the old saying goes, you keep doing like you've always done, you're going to get the results you've always got. And the advice that I uh, finally got from my doctor, and I don't know if he even knew what he was telling me at the time, but he says, you're just going to have to get away from your uh, business. And I said, you mean go somewhere else? (laughs) Uh, He said, yeah. And I said, what, do something different? He said, yeah, do something different. Oh, who's going to do my, uh, run my businesses? He said, well, who cares? In this condition, you're worthless anyway. Who cares if there is a business when you come back? Well, I said, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) I packed up the family. I said to my youngest brother, and he was just a young kid working for me. I said, hey, you run the companies, I'm gone. He said, for how long? I said, I don't know, until I can't stay away anymore. Cool, wow. what, what's going to happen with the businesses? He says, yeah, I said, you think I care? Look at me. Wow. I'm no good to you. I'm no good to my family. I'm no good to anybody. I can build a business anytime I want if I'm feeling good, but in this condition, I'm worthless. And so those were, you know, that experience motivated me to write that book and say, hey, 
you know, if somebody's going through, and that book is really designed yeah. for those who are either burned out or burnout prone, because not everybody is prone to burnout. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people will just rust out. Yeah, yeah. They'll definitely. never burn out because they're, 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 they're not on fire. Yeah. And then the second book, I had a publisher approach me and say, hey, why don't you write a book for people who um, not necessarily burned or prone out or burned out, but who just don't have a life that's in balance because I talked about life balance, balance and yeah. discovering that I need to, it was the lack of balance that caused the burnout. So my second book is five F words that will energize your life, family, friends, fitness, finances, and faith. Wow. And that if you focus and set goals on in each one of those areas, it is impossible for you to burn out because there is a limiting factor and it's called 24 hours in a day. Mm. So if you've got a goal to sleep minus seven hours, I need seven hours, I go to bed by nine o'clock at night and by four o'clock I'm done. I'm finished uh, sleeping, you know, or if it's 9.30, it's 4.30, but somewhere in there I need to get seven hours and I need to get a few of those hours yep. before midnight. That's key. And I go into that about sleep and I go into about drinking enough water and, you know, there's just this, a lot of rituals <laughs> that I had to, and I wasn't doing. Those are all yeah. things I wasn't doing. It's not the things that I was doing that caused my burnout. It's the things I wasn't doing. Hmm. And then I talk a little bit about meditating and, uh, you know, as uh, evangelical Christians, for instance, there was teachings that we got that say, oh, that's not, you know, that's Eastern religion. And really, yeah. <laughs> some of us are, <laughs> you know, we have good intentions sometimes when we're uh, teaching uh, people, but we only can teach what we know. Yeah. And so the truth will set us free. Definitely. But we better make sure it's the truth. Yeah. I say, you know, go to church, but make sure you take your brain with you. <laughs> too many people leave their brains at home and they just take <laughs> for gospel what they're told. Wow. Meanwhile, the poor guy standing up there, he's only teaching what he's being taught. Yeah. He doesn't know anything else, so we can't blame him. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you or I know something that we know can help the world, we've it's our duty, it's our obligation to spread that news and say, hey, guys, I, uh, this is, I've learned this, and um, you need to know about this. Yeah. And um, that's why you and I are doing this interview, I think, Dale. Yeah, you're correct, Ben. Okay. So that's that's why I wrote books. They, um, uh, my next book is um, is is gonna go into entrepreneurship and how uh, I the lessons I learned from uh, my 35 years now as a an entrepreneur. I started at the age of 21. Uh, from 14 to 21, I worked in, on the farm. Uh, I was finished school just as I turned 14, and uh, I learned some lessons there about uh, practical uh, lessons on uh, feeding chickens and uh, yeah. many other things. I learned the electrical trade there, but um, yeah, the thing is we can give away our experiences and still have that wisdom, that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's what you were saying earlier. You said something about, oh, the church is supposed to uh, spread knowledge and to teach as well. Yeah. And uh, you're right on. The thing is, somebody uh, on Twitter the other day asked me, oh, well, you know, what's the difference between um, knowledge and wisdom? Well, hmm. knowledge is the information. Yeah. But wisdom is the skillful application of knowledge. Yeah. So too many, you know, the old saying goes, you know, how many rich professors or teachers have you seen? The thing is, they know how to teach you how to start a business, but they've never done it. And so mm -hmm. they only have knowledge. wisdom. They only have knowledge. They don't have the wisdom. They just have knowledge. They don't have wisdom. Yeah, absolutely right. And so that's why it's important for people when they have some wisdom and they have some experience and they have this knowledge is to make sure that they share it because you can only share it while you're alive. If you don't get it into a book or into a recording, um, that will outlive you then. 
or if yeah. you uh, develop you mentor a young person they you know they learn what you know they yeah. can turn around and, and spread that uh, information and knowledge and wisdom as well okay I would like to find out something this is personal question now when for example let's say a young person wants to start with entrepreneurship the guy wants to go into entrepreneurship what steps what guide will you give the guy at, okay let's say Dio wants to start an entrepreneurship journey, he wants to start a business. What guide will you give him? So we need to know, first of all, uh, we need to know what turns this person on. Because if we get them going down the wrong path, we have not helped them, we have hurt them because they're going to have a failure and then they're going to feel worse about themselves. Their self-esteem is dropped and because most people take failure way too seriously and it's really no big deal. I say I've failed more than most people I know. I've also wow. won more than most people that I know, but failure is not a big deal. It's not a person. It's an experience. So to yeah. avoid failure, though, as much as possible, I say suggest and I've been teaching the the disc profile for many years and I even give young people the chance to do it for free it's $250 profiling it's on my website under free tools for young entrepreneurs you go there yeah I'm going to link to that in the show notes for this episode oh good it's the disc profile I say then and I get regular emails people oh what business should I start I said well First of all, do the DISC profile. You'll learn more about yourself in 10 minutes than you would in 10 years uh, otherwise. And I don't even interview anybody for a job without having them fill it out. It only takes 10 minutes. And I say, send it to me. Um, there's another profile which will come attached, and those are your values. So we want to know what your values are. And the way you've answered these questions will tell us what's important to you. So we don't want to get you into a uh, the wrong business. Uh, for instance, some people need to work with people. Well, we don't want to start them on a business where they're working in a back office by themselves and have no contact with people. Yep. And so there's really D is for the dominance factor in a person's profile. The, the I is stands for influence. These are, uh, so D would be an outgoing project person. I would be an outgoing people person like I am, like you are. <laughs> and then you have S, which is a um, somebody who is a real servant. They're very steady. And so these are introverted people persons. And so they make great uh, assistance. And then we have the Cs, and they are introverted project people and those are the ones we want doing the surgery on us those are the ones we want for our accountant and those are the ones we want for pay attention to details engineering they pay attention to details so yes. the first thing i say is do this thing it'll take you 10 minutes won't cost you a dime see my goal is to be able to get a young entrepreneur in business in 24 hours with almost no cash out of their own pocket if wow. they have already access to uh, internet and most people can do that by going to an internet cafe or somewhere uh, to get online ideally they have it in their home but it's still it's not necessary for the first few months until they get some cash coming in yeah what we want to do is remove every excuse possible for you not to start your own business and you know i've started so many businesses i could start them in my sleep but for the average <laughs> person they look at starting a business oh my goodness that's <laughs> isn't that accounting wow. and to, yeah so what <laughs> there's lots of people they're looking for a job you put them to work as your accountant you don't pay them by the hour they sit in their own house and you send them your documents once a month or you just put them in Dropbox and you share that with them. Yeah. There's so many ways now that we can. I don't care if you're in uh, Romania, Nigeria or Timbuktu. There's no re reason for you not to be uh, financially successful in your own small business. Mm. Uh, if you have the, the right uh, support, uh, encouragement, knowledge. See, the first one is I say, no, you've got to study before you start. Okay. So you can't be lazy. So 
you've got to study, you've got to take an interest and learn. That's the no part. So I say no, go and grow. So yeah. you've got to study before you start. Starting is the go part. And if you study before you start, you will have success. Success yeah. is the growth. And success may be being, you know, Oh, I know a lot of young people here, if they could make $500 a month in their own business, they would be thrilled. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be a million bucks yeah. that you start. You yeah. know, when I left that commune, my goal was to be a millionaire by the time I was 50. Well, I didn't know, had no idea. I never ran a business. I didn't, I just thought that sounded like a good number, you know, and I didn't realize, oh, you could do that overnight. <laughs> the thing is, um, uh, yeah, that's not success. Uh, now it's different for everybody, and for me, success now is is uh, helping people help themselves and, and uh, firing up young people in their own business. And so, yeah. Uh, well, you have given about three, four steps, which I so much appreciate. In your site, I can see there's a free tool for young entrepreneurs, which I'm going to link to at kubasec.com forward slash free iPhone tools, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to link to that in the show notes for this episode. And lastly, let's say somebody wants to reach out to you. How can the person reach you? Oh, it's easy. My email is just ben at kubasec.com. So, and they can also reach me on that site that you're going to link to. Yep. And um, they can, so that's the easiest, or they can follow me on Twitter, and my Twitter name is just my name, at Ben Kubasek, and the same on Facebook, it's just my name. Every, try and keep everything simple, yeah, that cute. way, uh, you know, I'm just a farm boy. <laughs> 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 that's quite interesting. I really want to appreciate you, Ben. Thank you for being on the Audacity to Lead podcast today. Thanks, Dale. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Wow. And that's it for this episode of the Audacity to Lead podcast. You can find all of Ben's information and the show notes of this particular episode at audacitytolead.com slash 19. That is audacitytolead.com forward slash 19. And you can also find the tools he shared, the free tools he shared, the disk assessment profile and the other materials he mentioned. You also find them and you can even find his book the link to his book at audacitytolead.com forward slash 19. Well, this episode was an inspiring one for me because after I finished the conversation with him, I sat down and I was thinking, wow, this man really had <laughs> some stories to share. And really, he did. He has stories to share. And this will be the end of this episode for today. I also want to announce to you that Audacity to Lead is now on iTunes and I'm excited about that and you can subscribe to this show if you're on iTunes or you use an iPhone or an iOS device you can subscribe to Audacity to Lead podcast by going to audacity to lead.com forward slash iTunes it takes you directly to where you can subscribe for iTunes and you can do that remember everything you need to get from this episode you will find them at the show notes at audacitytolead.com forward slash 19. Don't forget to get focused, get started, and be impactful. I see you again on the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Audacity to Lead podcast. We believe you've been inspired and greatly challenged to step out and lead with more influence and impact. Till next Tuesday, when we bring you another episode of the podcast. For more resources, visit audacitytolead.com.